British indie band Bastille, or Bastille Band, global waves, of course, in these last couple of years, burst onto the scene in 2013. The debut album, Bad Blood, included Pompeii. Of course, since then, they've sold more than 9 million. They're in the country for a show at Auckland Spark tonight uh, to support the new album, which is Doom Days. The vocalist Dan Smith, keyboard player Kyle Simmons are both with us. Good to meet you guys. Hello. You too. How are you doing? I'm very well indeed. I, I hesitate to raise the um, to raise the Pompeii question because I worry that you'll be going, oh, God, all he's going to do is talk about Pompeii. But it must be one of the greatest songs of all time. Oh, wow. Thanks, man. Don't you think? Um, I, well, we are a self-loathing um, <laughs> load of British people, so obviously not. We think it's terrible, but it's, <laughs> but it has changed our lives. And um, it's, it's certainly fine to bring it up if that's the sentence that follows it. <laughs> because um, I, yeah. Well, because I happened to see you the other day. This is purely happenstance. I was on a plane and they were playing Glastonbury, yeah. or the highlights of Glastonbury, where you were last year. And of course, they played that particular song. So Glastonbury, is it all it's cut out to be? A hundred percent. And more. And more. Yeah, I, I like I'm. You're asking the biggest Glastonbury nerd probably in the world. I've been. I go every year with my mates, regardless of whether or not we're playing. Um, he buys tickets even when we're playing. Yeah, I'm so paranoid about <laughs> yeah. not getting in. <laughs> I'm such a loser. But it is amazing. I think. I think it's kind of hard to describe to people who haven't been there, um, just because it's it's pretty much anyone you'd ever want to see live musically as a place but when when it's on it becomes the like largest town in that part of the UK because of the concentration of people it's just it's amazing there's anything you'd want to do any they they create entire worlds that exist so it's kind of like being in the middle of a big yeah. Yeah. theme parky trip thing but the it's, music's also amazing. and and as a band to play like obviously it's got this history and for us to get to play on the pyramid stage you know is was, was do pretty, you feel like you've made it i i think never but maybe in that moment, I think we got to play on the Friday and then we got to hang out all weekend. And we, when we were playing, people were like, you couldn't get into the field kind of busy. And, and I'm such a paranoid, negative person that I was like, no one's going to come. No one's going to come. It's going to be terrible. It's going to be us playing to like the people who are still asleep from the night before. Isn't that amazing? Lying on their like. How many people do you reckon in the music industry are like you? I mean, you know Moby. Um, do you know the name Moby? Yeah, we know, yeah, yeah. Right. So anyway, I meet Moby years ago and we're sitting in a mini doing a, an interview and he spends the whole time telling me because he's here to sign some some book and he goes do you think anyone's going to turn up and i go mate you're one of the biggest names in the world of course they're going to turn up yes i don't think they're going to turn up i don't think anyone likes me i think what the hell do you want a therapist or what <laughs> are, 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 are lots of you guys like that in reality or not uh, i don't think so I, I think probably most people who do creative things are racked with insecurities but um <clears throat> I don't know. But back to Pompeii. I'm, I'm, I'm worse than most, I think. <laughs> okay. But but back to Pompeii. So that's the song that changed your life. And this is the story I love about it. So you're on a what? A van? A car? You're yeah. going... You're, you're nobody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, thanks. Yeah. No, but I mean... Yeah, no, at the time, at the time, like, when we started out, we... You know, we 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 were like a, a just an indie band in the UK. We used to borrow a car from our friend's mum, put all the gear in the back, try and cram ourselves in, and just you know we'd tour like like you know like anyone starting out. We'd drive up and down the country, sleep on friends' floors, and play gigs in pubs to like anywhere between nine and fifty people. You know, and, and it, it was building and growing, and we had all these songs. We never ever imagined that um, that, that that song would suddenly. So, be. how does a song develop then? Because you've got the song, you don't think it's a smash. You don't think it's anything different from whatever else you've done? Well, I guess, like, kind of to go back on Dan's point, sort of like being self loathing and, and not really having any confidence in yourself. I, I think we were, we're just sort of realists, and, and, you know, especially as a young man coming up with a, just a million other bands coming up around you and stuff. Um, it's hard to, it's hard to get a song in sort of in your arsenal, as it were, and go, that's it, that's the one, that's a smash, because. Um, it's it was all kind of to do with like timing and kind of like having the right setup because we we released like f a few songs before that and 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 we saw them as us like kind of slowly raising our profile and then when Pompey came out that was just kind of boom. But also yeah. also I guess we never as a band like we're obviously doing this because we love making music but we were never we were never like sitting around in a rehearsal and being like we want to be a massive band that gets to like go to New Zealand and America like, like we, it just didn't occur to us in our heads we were like. You know, if we could play of like the one thousand capacity theatre in London, that would have been like so. Fully so, having... if you can earn some food money, yeah, yeah, and, exactly, and, and exactly. have a good time, yeah, 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 then you're doing okay. Yeah. So, so suddenly, you know, when Pompeii came out and and you know did really well in the UK and then all over Europe and then here and you know and then in America, like we we were sort of kind of quite naively like just chasing this this song and that album like yeah. around the world, which is amazing and such a privilege. But it wasn't something that we were kind of 
like um, reaching for so, so underprepared for that. Yeah, it was so because yeah. for the with the benefit of hindsight, surely it seems like such a magnificent song, doesn't it? I mean, it's got it all. It's an anthem, and anthems are wonderful, aren't they? Yeah, 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 totally. yeah totally. Hey, oh, hey, I mean, <laughs> yeah. come on, you can't, you can't stop well, singing. I mean, it is the chant, isn't it? It is the it's chant. The chant, the chant it's, gets it's you. That, yeah. It's a, but, you know, also, like, like, it's a song about, and a lot of our first album, the topics are quite weird. You know, it's a song about two charred, ashy corpses um, in the aftermath of a volcano who've been in the same position for a very long time and are pretty bored. And it's about them having a chat, a little nostalgic chat about how, about the feeling of stasis. And weirdly, at the time, my brain equated um, the stasis I was feeling in my life to the pictures of these victims <laughs> of the volcano that I was seeing in. That's a pretty in, grand in, idea of yourself. I, no, I know, I know. <laughs> but I was, I, was re, I was, yeah, I was reading a lot. But anyway, it's, but, but, so there's a kind of weird irony to, to, to that, um, you know, but all of our songs have, we've tried to write about things that are. Yeah. But here's the interesting thing about you guys is, is that having, having been inspired, having loved the song and watched you at Glastonbury, I then go watch your whole set at Glastonbury. So I'm watching half an hour of you and then I listen to your own. Is, is there's huge variety in what you do. Yeah. Let me ask you this question before the break. Do you run the risk? So you're in, in an artistic pursuit, you're fulfilling your dreams, aspirations, whatever they may be. But yeah. do you worry that you leave people along the way and go, well, hang on, I like Pompeii, but this, this thing here that's completely different and sounds nothing like Pompeii, I don't get it, don't want it, and therefore, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, totally. You burn, the, burn your fans. I, yeah. I, th I, think, I think any, you know, I, I'm always interested to looking at other bands and other artists and often with their second album, they like, right, let's just remake our first one with, with different huh. songs. And that's completely, that's completely fine and like understandable. I think with us, it was even within our first album and the mixtapes we made, we were always trying to do a million different things. So you're totally right. I'm sure, I'm sure we've, uh, I mean, I have come it. across people who, who are sort of, you know, Oh, like I love this batch of songs or, or I love this batch of songs. And it, it's, it's kind of, but equally we come across people like ourselves who like, like sort of like loads of different styles of music and, and like and I'm really happy that 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 sort of like one band are attempting to tackle each like each <laughs> and every one particularly of now like I think you know in when we first started out we made pop music but we were everything else about us was this kind of indie band thing so I remember a lot of critics in the UK were kind of stressed and angry at us for, <laughs> for making I remember I, I had this like almost like a fight once with this journalist who was like but what are you and I was like I don't think it matters mate <laughs> and 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 uh and, but it's, it's interesting you know in the years since then you know in the sort of six seven years now like now we digest music via via streaming services and Spotify exactly. and, and 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 I think kids like any anyone who's like our age or younger, like we all like everything. It and we is all what it is. To, exactly. We all pick and choose from. You know, we could be just as inspired by like Kendrick Lamar as we are by the Beatles, or like you know anything and everything in between. I think that's and, true. So you were a solo artist. So mm -hmm. what, the only reason I raise that is I'm always interested in solo artists who go to groups versus or, or groups that end up with a solo artist. So are you naturally solo, or you found your Nirvana and groups are where it's at. Um, I definitely, I, I, I was so uncomfortable being. I can say so myself. safely that Dan was not a comfortable <laughs> no, solo no. artist. I mean, he's not comfortable in a band, but solo. No. I basically, it's, it's because when I first started out, I was like, a I was making music in my bedroom, and then I was figuring out how to do that live. I then started playing with a loop pedal and trying to sort of replicate that, but I was always so uncomfortable on stage. Um, and then when we started playing as a band, and I met the guys, you know, we, um, I hated being on stage so much that I used to sit at the side of the stage with, behind a piano and Will, our bass player, would be front and center, occasionally doing the old backing <laughs> vocal. And people would be like, what's going on here? Why is that guy hiding in the Do corner? You know what? Although in hindsight, it's super Sia, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's that kind of Sia vibe. We did it before Sia did. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I, guess I didn't you have a call we yeah. Let me ask you this about this, the business we were talking about before, about being a little bit indie, doing your own thing, following your own path, and yet highly commercial. Uh, because I think most people, although we don't have John Lewis, know who John Lewis is, and John Lewis are famous for their Christmas ad. Yes. And it got, this this past year's one, got some coverage here with the dragon, and it was a beautiful piece of work, and God knows how much it cost to make, but they do it. <laughs> and who sang the song? Uh, I did. Yes, you did. <laughs> yeah, sorry. It, 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 oh, that was, it, was, that was me. It <laughs> wasn't a trick question. <laughs> so you're sing so that's a highly commercial thing to do. So you sit comfortably in the commercial world, yeah. the independent world, and that's deliberate on your part, or it's just all happenstance, and these things just unfold before you. I, I, I think it's the latter. You know, we we didn't set out like I'm a huge fan of pop music, but my, in my mind, pop music is anything from like "Smells Like Teen Spirit" by Nirvana through to like bigger than hip hop. Like I think just pop to me is just big songs that people love and remember. Yeah. So we just, you know, I've always wanted to make music like that and we've always done it from a place that's pretty independent. Sometimes, sometimes it crosses over yeah. and people love it, sometimes it doesn't. With the John Lewis thing, it was, uh, that's such a, trying to explain that to people 
you know, outside of the UK and be like, so every year there's this advert for a department store that for some reason we all get so excited about yeah. if you're British. But um, but that was, you know, we were, I was just asked to have a go at But the year the before was Elton John. I know, that's pretty mad, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it, we, we were asked to sing it. it um, and what do you sing though? Come on. REO Speedwagon. Speedwagon. Yeah. Such a great song. It's Isn't it a great, great song? Such a great song. It's a fantastic and so so good that you've got it on the latest album. Uh yeah, well, we yeah, we did like a we did a, a extended version of our album with that and a bunch of other stuff as well. We did we've done quite a lot of stuff with orchestras recently because we're really obsessed with film soundtracks. Right. And that was, you know, the, with that REO Speedwagon cover, we got to do it with this amazing orchestra from London who did like they did all the last Radiohead album, they do all, all Johnny Greenwood stuff and Frank Ocean stuff there. We were, part of the reason we did it was we were just super excited to work with them. They're called the London Contemporary Orchestra in there. Absolutely, Insane. absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Having said that, uh, the interesting thing, another interesting thing for me is that, that, that I, it appears you didn't want to be famous. You don't want to be famous. You go out of your way not to be famous. In other words, you don't want to walk down the street and get mobbed. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Why? That's a good question. I think I think you know it's it's there's no way of saying it without being really corny. But like we just really like making music. But when we were never in it to sort of be be recognised or be known. And 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 I don't love being on stage, but but I do love making music that people enjoy. And and having people sing our music back to us is the most gratifying experience. I don't know. I guess like we were suddenly in this position, like we were explaining earlier, where where we'd gone from being this small little band to suddenly having music that lots of people are hearing. And it was a conscious decision at the time to be like. We don't want to do like panel shows or, or be judges on shows or be in people's faces because we were like we we didn't really want to be in the music videos. Right. We were like, I think there's just like like uh, there's there's a difference between sort of the success and fame, of course. And you know, sort of success was something that obviously we like we we would love if possible because to kind of get that affirmation from the stuff that we make and go, yeah, that's good enough that. That that, you, that that can be your job now. That, that that's incredible. But then there's a the fame side that, that that some people like to call, and that's absolutely fine. But that was just never kind sure. of something that we that you don't we want wanted. that as but climbing it, over your fence at night. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. also then you know those two things, especially in this industry, are like quite often intertwined, and you have to kind of balance it. That. Yeah, and, and also some people don't have a choice. I think with us, like you know, we we kind of what we didn't say. We like when, we, when our music was big. We at the beginning we didn't like caught it say controversial things you know try and get attention because we were lucky enough to have yeah. people just really like our music look tell but, you um, what i've enjoyed meeting you and i hope you have a great stay in the country i hope the show man. tonight goes fantastically well and Me too. Um, come back come back uh, well i'm sure it will because you're, <laughs> you're, you're, you're in charge but uh come back anytime thank you so much thanks thank for having you. us good to see you. it is dan smith and carl simmons from bastille performing